Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 7, The Force Awakens. I know a lot of people grumble about the uh, sequel trilogy, uh, but I really enjoyed Episode 7. I saw it in the theater like six or seven times. Uh, We've been star for anything new Star Wars for a very long time. I love Daisy Ridley. I love Adam Driver. I mean, I wish they would have stuck to the old school storyline going into 35 years after Return of the Jedi. You know, the old books and that whole storyline. Uh, but... For what they did, I mean, I love J.J. Abrams. For what he did, it was amazing. I liked the movie. Episode 8 kind of destroyed it, uh, but Episode 7 was great. And they busted out a lot of cool stuff for it. They had a lot of cool toys, a lot of cool products. They had shirts and all the nights. Sorry, there's a little paint stain from when I was back to painting my parents' house. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to show you all the Episode 7 stuff. And at the end, I'm going to unpackage a brand new bag clip. Got a brand new Mandalorian bag clip from a brand new series that I hadn't seen before. I'm not sure what it is. I haven't really felt around in it, but it looks like a lot of them are kind of similar uh, in feel. And there's a couple of mystery ones in this set, so hopefully we'll get one of those. Uh, but yeah, let's get to the Episode 7 stuff. There's a lot to go through. I didn't actually pick up all the vehicles. I think I only picked up a couple of them, uh, but the ones I did, you know, were definitely cool. Uh, this is one of the vehicles that came out. This, You know, in the Episode 7, we saw a brand new version of Stormtroopers. So I have, all, of them, all of them had these new kind of helmets. And then this is one of the new uh, Stormtroopers that came out. And this one was kind of cool because it was a Shadow Stormtrooper of sorts. Um, you didn't actually see one of these guys in the movie, I don't think. Uh, but it was a pretty cool uh, figure, though. He's all black, and he's got the cool uh, First Order red stripes there. And kind of a cool new speeder bike. Kind of reminiscent of the other ones, except for, you know, he's got kind of black and reds going on it. Kind of a cool new angler look to it. And yeah, so this was kind of a cool new speeder that we got to see. As far as, you know, almost like a... Expanding universe on the new uh, trilogy, and then let's go on to yeah. And this is the only actual like sizable vehicle that I ever picked up. It was a Toys R Us exclusive Tie Fighter. I just picked it up because it was kind of a new version of a Tie Fighter. And it had kind of cool new uh, wings, kind of new paint job to it, cool new look. Came with the Tie Fighter pilot, and I think the only way you could get this pilot was if you got one of these Tie Fighters. And there's the old Toys R Us exclusive sticker. Here we show the back of it. Kind of got some cool uh, details to it. I like how they did the wings. And of course, you know, cool little uh, laser missiles that shoot off. And then, of course, as usual, you can detach the uh, wings off of it. You know, for to create battle scenes, battle damage, and all that. Uh, and then they made a bunch of different uh, deluxe figures. So it was just single packs figures. And they came with a cool, like, deluxe kind of weaponry of sorts. And this was the Kylo Ren one. Of course, we hadn't seen a cool new Sith guy in a long time. And of course, when you first were going into uh, The Force Awakens, you didn't know who Kylo Ren was. Uh, of course, we found out later that it was Ben Solo, the son of uh, Han and Leia. Um, but yeah, we were hoping for Jason Solo and Darth Cadus, but we got Kylo Ren and Ben Solo. But yeah, it was kind of a cool character. I like how they kind of did his lightsaber and the kind of, you know, crazy... Was it, uh, how the, I don't know, just how it's not exactly pure, like, blade, like usual, how it's kind of like, like a fray, like the crystal's imperfect or whatever inside. And then here's another one of the deluxe figures I got, just because, you know, I like the tie pilots. You know, like, kind of how they did his helmet. It's kind of red and black. And, of course, they gave him kind of some sort of funky little extra weaponry, armor, vest, the kind of thing. Here's what it looks like on him once you bust that open. Uh, but yeah, that was kind of cool. I didn't really pick up a ton of these deluxe single packs. Just a couple, you know, the ones I liked. Uh, and then, of course, they came out with... Uh, there was two packs. I mean, two packs you could pick up. And they kind of continued this along into some of the next series, you know, in the Rogue One and all that. But I only picked up a couple of the uh, two packs just because there was characters in them that you could only get if you got the two packs. So I picked up these guys. Uh, these are who Finn tries to uh, basically take off with and work for when they're on Mos Katata's planet. He's like, I'm just leaving it all behind. I got to go. I got to get away from this battle. So these are the two guys that he was supposed to go off with. And they were kind of cool looking. Let's see. Uh, Sidon Ithano. And first mate Quig Quiggold. So that's who those guys are. Pretty cool helmet on this guy. Here's kind of a better look at what they look like without so much of the glare going on. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool new uh, aliens. The concept on uh, what they're going into. And, you know, some of the, there's very few ways to get BB-8 when you were trying to buy Episode 7 stuff. They didn't put out a single pack and they didn't have like a two pack with them. But they did bust out this two pack and you could get a BB-8 in that. And that was with... Uh, the Jakku scavenger that you see trying to uh, kidnap him when Rafe happens upon him. And then it also come with uh, Onkar's thug, which is the taller guy. 
So that's Unkar Sug, the tall guy. And he wasn't a part, he was the one attacking Ray when she came to this basically Jakku port or whatever she was, you know, basically her home base, not home base, but you know, wherever uh, Unkar Pluot or whatever it was where she had to come and bring in her scavenged items and for trade. Well, that's one of his thugs, and you know, they attacked him or attacked her trying to steal BB 8. And then, of course, that's the guy earlier that tried to steal BB 8. But one of the only ways you get BB 8 is in this pack, so. Of course, it was kind of important to get the pack at the time. And then, of course, the only way you could get these two guys was to get this pack. So, yeah, it was a pretty cool uh, little set. And then one of the only other ways to get BB-8 out of the figure sets is this four-pack. So this four-pack came with, of course, uh, you got a Finn, and you get Ray with a Saber, and Maz Kanata. So the, also, this was the only way at the time you could get a Maz Kanata figure because she, they didn't make her in a single pack for this series. And, of course, there's BB-8. And then on the back, you see him a little closer. Of course, Maz Kanata comes to the chest that Ray finds the uh, lightsaber in. And there's Finn with the uh, Poe Dameron's jacket. And, of course, BB-8. Everybody loves BB-8. Uh, but, yeah, let's get on to the single-pack figures. So as we go into the single-pack figures, this line actually had quite a few different figures in the set. So it's going to take us a minute to kind of go through it all. Uh, but it was really cool because, you know, back reminiscent of episode one, two, and three, they did put out a huge line of toys with like a whole bunch of figures. We wish they would have done that for episode nine and the Mandalorian, but you know, hopefully one day. So starting with this, here's one of the first order snow troopers. So this was, you know, kind of cool, uh, take when they were on the star killer base and they had the snow troopers. It was kind of reminiscent of, uh, Episode 5, when they're on the Hoth planet with the original Snow Troopers. And then we go on to, we have Captain Phasma. Some people liked her, some people didn't. It's just kind of a cool concept and, uh, you know, kind of a history on Phasma's armor. It was actually her armor was fashioned from metal, uh, salvaged from one of Palpatine's old Naboo cruisers. So that's where Phasma got the metal for, for her armor, but I wish they would have put this out in a chrome, you know, I wish they would have put the paint job as a chrome instead of this kind of stainless steel silver, uh, but I actually did make a custom chrome one that I'll probably show you at some other time when I get into showing you guys custom stuff, and then here's a first order flame trooper, it was kind of cool, you know, and the first kind of couple of scenes where you see Kylo Ren and, this, and the new stormtroopers, you see these flame troopers kind of laying waste to that town in Jakku. And then we go to General Hux. General Hux is kind of a cool new uh, Imperial baddie that kind of everybody loved to hate. You know, he's kind of one of those guys. Uh, moving on. And then we got to uh, Constable Zuvio. I guess Constable Zuvio was actually supposed to have a scene in the movie that got cut out. But before they did the final cut, they started making the figures. So they made one of Zuvio anyways. So you never really got to see him in action. And some people say you see him in the background of this or that and different stuff. Uh, but yeah, we never really got a really good appearance by Zuvio. And of course, here's Finn with his Stormtrooper armor. Of course, the first time we saw Finn, he was in the Stormtrooper armor. And he witnessed one of his buddies dying and his buddy in his last breath with his bloody, you know, glove kind of run his hand across Finn's helmet and created the little streaks of blood on his helmet. Uh, but that was kind of one of the convincing factors to get Finn to turn against the dark side. Here's Unkar. This is the guy that basically was in charge of Rey on the on Jakku. And he was basically, you know, she would go scavenger goods and she'd have to turn it into him. But I think she got sold to him. So she was technically kind of his slave uh, when his, her parents dropped her off onto Jakku. Uh, but yeah, here's moving on. We got a, a cool new aliens. You got to see this guy in Mos Kanata's bar basically and just a husk thug uh but it's pretty cool to see you know that them making you know the little side aliens especially you know since we never got to see side aliens anywhere after uh what was it episode actually these are probably the last line of figures they made where they were busting out all the cool side aliens it was kind of cool though to see him uh, moving on let's go we got oh there's just a regular old first order stormtrooper just every day, run of the mill, first order stormtrooper, nothing special, nothing crazy. Uh, moving on, we got Kylo Ren. You know, for some dumb reason, they made a couple different packagings for this Kylo Ren. So there's this, and it comes with that accessory. And then there's this one, different picture, different accessory, same figure. Maybe so they could sell multiples of the same figure, or maybe because they thought it was going to be more of a hot commodity. I don't know, I guess kids these days kind of like Kylo Ren a little bit more than they did in the beginning. Um, but yeah, so you got a couple different packaged of the same figure. Let's go 
on to the next. Oh, yeah, and here we go. Cool side character. This was Guavian. And this was uh, the Guavian uh, gang that was run by, what was his name? Balotique. So Balotique had these guys running around with him, helping him run down Han Solo, and try to collect his money that Solo owed him. And here's, a, I'll show you Balotique. I forgot to actually show you that before. But here's Balotique. And for some reason, they didn't make his figure until the uh, episode 8 line of figures. And he came with a Rathtar, which is pretty cool. I mean, I've heard once you open these bad boys up, it's hard to get the tentacles to attach to the Rathtar body itself. Uh, but I guess a little bit of heat or something like that helps make it so you can snap the tentacles into the ball. But there's Balotique. Kind of a cool guy. Um, moving on, we got more side characters. Let's see if... Situate these right, and this was a really cool new take on a droid. You can saw this guy kind of in the background, he's with the resistance. Uh, PZ4CO, definitely a cool new droid. Kind of super excited to find that figure when I found it because at the time you couldn't find him anywhere because everybody's buying up all the new stuff as soon as it hit the shelves. And then here we go. Oh, yeah, Tasu Leech. Tasu Leech was there at the same time as uh, Balatik trying to hunt down Solo and. Collect on the money that Solo owed him. Um, yeah, this guy was kind of towards the end of the line. So I think they were a little bit harder to find than some of the rest of these figures that you saw in the first few waves. And here's the regular everyday uh, Finn. And this is just Finn on Jakku. Nothing special. Just Finn. No lightsaber, no nothing. Just regular old Finn. And here's a figure that was a little harder to find. This is the Han Solo figure. So this is the first time we got to see a Han Solo figure of, of age. He was getting a little bit older, uh, but he was yet yeah, released kind of towards the end too, so he was a little bit harder to find. Uh, so I was super excited when I was able to pick up uh, him. Uh, let's go on to over here. Now we have a resistance trooper, and it was kind of cool to see new types of rebel troopers or resistance troopers or whatnot. Kind of cool new helmets. You know, it's been 35 years since the Return of the Jedi, so of course there's been a little bit of advancement in their uh, outfits or technology or what what have you. Um, so there's that. And then, of course, we had this guy. I forget what scene this guy was from. It was Goss Tours. Uh, but, yeah, he's just kind of one of those weird background characters that they decided to make a figure of. Um, yeah, like I said, I wish they would have done that for Episode Nine and The Mandalorian. But we'll see. See how that goes there. And then this guy was uh, X-Wing pilot Asti. Uh, I'm not sure if this might have been a European exclusive. I forget, maybe one of these. Maybe none of the series was actually any sort of exclusives to anywhere. But uh, I think at some point, maybe the next series, episode 8, this guy's figure was you could only buy it in Europe or Canada or something like that. Uh, moving on, we have Admiral Akbar. Pretty cool to see a brand new updated Akbar. Of course, rest in peace after episode 8. But yeah, pretty awesome new outfit for Akbar. Hadn't seen him in a while. Of course, it took him 30 years to make all those new movies. Moving on, we got the uh, Stormtrooper Squad Leader. This one might have been one that was harder to find. This definitely came out towards the end of the line of figures, um, but that's him. Of course, I missed out on this Ray packaged in the original package, but I did have one in the Rogue One series, so I busted that out for this video because, yeah, of course, one of the very first wave of these figures of the Episode 7 figures, there was this Ray. But she came in that package. So, uh, nah, I never picked that up, but I picked this one up. So, there she is, right on her Jakku gear. And moving on. Oh, yeah, we got to see uh, Neem Nub. Everybody loved Neem Nub from the original movies. And, okay, of course, he has aged well. And we see him in Episode 6 and Episode 7. And I think maybe he was in Empire Strikes Back, too. I forget. But maybe he was just in Return of the Jedi. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to uh, go back and check that out. And, of course, here we get... Uh, Ray, when she's on Mos Kanata's planet, after she acquires the lightsaber. Maybe this is when they were on Starkiller Base. I'm not sure. But no, I think it's just uh, yeah, once she's back and joined with the uh, Resistance. or She didn't join with the Resistance. Oh, yeah. The, no, this was, yeah, Mos Kanata's planet, Ray. Uh, but, yeah, cool lightsaber. Didn't quite do too crazy detailed on the faces by any means. But, yeah, it's cool to have a Ray figure. And then this guy, of course, another side character, Sarko Plank. And he kind of looked like, I think, uh, the characters from the Solo movie when they were on Corellia. So maybe underneath that mask, he has a lizard head just like those other guys. But And here we go. This is one of the harder fi to find figures uh, for Episode 7 because, it, like I said before, the other ones, they came out towards the end. So it was kind of the last wave. And 
when you first released the movies, they weren't going to show you by spoiling by what his face looked like. Uh, so yeah, so this is the first figure that you guys see of Kylo Ren and his face. Yeah, and I om almost forgot that this two-pack, too. This came out with the Rogue One series, but this was supposed to be for the Episode 7 set. And this is Finn with a lightsaber and Phasma. All right, now that we got through all the Star Wars Episode 7 stuff that I got, let's open up this bad boy and see what it is. Of course, I forgot to bring in the thing to cut it open again, like scissors or whatnot, but uh, last, like the last couple of these that I did, I uh, just got the teeth it. Let me get this open and let's see what we got. Hopefully it's a good one. Hopefully it's a good one. Hopefully it's a good one. Oh, hey, it's sweet. It's the armor. I'm not too upset with that because, you know, there could have been worse ones to get. It would have been cool to get a Baby Yoda or the Jawa, but it's, I guess, better than maybe Quill or Grief Karga. Uh, but, yeah, got the armor. So that's pretty exciting. All right, yeah, so make sure if you like my content to like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys soon.